are gonna love this interview. Just got done editing it. I'm glad I got it live for you. I'll be in the comments for the next 30 minutes hanging out, answering any questions you have. In fact, leave a comment below about data points or what you think is gonna happen to the company and I will respond to every comment. Additionally, if you're just loving the content, click the thumbs up and I will go and check out your profile as well and give your videos some love as well. In the meantime, enjoy the interview. Hello everyone, my guest today is Eugene Levin. He was one of the first investors to spot a company called SEM Rush. After joining the company as a chief strategy officer, he helped to more than quadruple company revenue and raised over $40 million from tier one investors. Before that, he was a partner at Target Global, a pan-European venture fund that invests in cons the consumer internet space. All right, Eugene, you ready to take us to the top? Yeah, absolutely, happy to do that. All right, so for folks that have don't know what SEM Rush does, what's the product do? Uh, we help companies to improve their online visibility um, from you know search engine optimization, where we uh, became household name over the last ten years, to you know things like pay per click, di digital advertising, uh, social media, digital PR, and so on. So technically, we try to help people with every everything related to uh, top of the funnel. Okay, and when you came on back in May of 2018, you shared the company was founded in 2008. When did you join? I joined in 16. Okay, 2016. Okay, got it. So you've been there obviously three, four years now at this point. And uh, you also shared at that point that the company had raised about 40 million bucks. Have you guys been able to grow with just that money or did you raise additional capital? Uh, we we raised some money, but frankly speaking, we didn't touch, you know, this this uh, this round. It's, it's pretty much every, all on the balance sheet. Uh, we have been bootstrapped company from the very beginning. Uh, very healthy economics, and um, we we didn't really need extra capital. We used it more as as um, you know safety net to allow us uh, run more experiments. Mm -hmm. However, most of those experiments proved to be successful, so we didn't need this safety net at at any point. So, but, so true or uh, false? I mean, more than more than thirty million bucks at forty million is still sitting in the bank doing nothing. Uh, not doing nothing. I think I think you know in times like this, it's actually really very uh, comforting to have additional 30, 40 million. It, but it's sitting there in the bank basically for you to do whatever you want to do with. You haven't spent it, or you yep. spent it and already returned money. Uh, yes, like sometimes you invest and they just get back very fast. So so we we had a couple of those experiments when we started investing in new products or running new types of uh, marketing campaigns, but they paid back very fast. So. Yeah. Um, okay. So how do you, let's go back to kind of like pre-virus, right? When founders yeah. come on the show and say like, we raised a bunch of capital, but we didn't touch it. Like they say that, and I can tell when they say it, they're saying it as a sign of strength. But in my mind, I can't help think, well, that's pretty stupid. You just got diluted for nothing, yeah. right? So yeah. how, do you, like, how do you balance the fact that like you don't need money, but you still got diluted? You're an XVC. Yeah. So so the, the math is, is very simple. As company gets bigger, uh, technically, you want to have certain amount of money on the balance sheet comparable to your revenue, like monthly revenue, or you know, better say monthly expenses. Sure. In case things happen, you want to be able to to run the business for a while. So I think when I joined, we were in a situation where we had money in the bank and we were profitable, but that was not comparable to our revenue and expenses. So that gives you very low room for any sort of errors. Um, so I think when people think about their, their cash position, um, you know, in, in the world where you're a VC funded company and, and the reality is you have like 18 months of runway and, you know, nothing, nothing going to change that. Um, is, is this reality is very different comparing to bootstrap business where you, you put all your life, you've built over years and you don't want to take those types of risks. So you want to have a little bit more on a balance sheet in case, you know, hard times come uh, to be prepared. So you joined in 2016, you guys raised the 40 million and two years later in 2018, I assume you played a critical role in figuring out how much to raise, what was the right amount? What was that actual runway number for you? Were you targeting 18 months of runway to cover burn 24 months? What was it? Uh, no, I mean, we, so we, we thought about this in a way that, you know, we will have a couple of months 
of of our runway on a balance sheet if we, if we have zero revenue like mm-hmm. we, we can you know if, if there is no revenue we still can do this for you know a couple months at least okay but without this money it would be less than a month so so we we actually had very very um uh good cash management but uh, you know, amount of cash that we had on the balance sheet was not comparable to to monthly revenue and monthly expenses. Mm-hmm. I'm just trying to I'm digging here to try and understand exactly what you're saying. So what I'm hearing you say is you went out and raised 40 million bucks to assume a catastrophe hit. You had no new no revenue at all coming in, not no new revenue, no revenue at all coming in for several mm-hmm. months. You'd be able to pay all your expenses for five to eight mm-hmm. months. Is that accurate? Yeah, kind of, kind of like that. Yeah. Okay, I mean, so forty million divided by like five or six months. That I mean, basically, what I'm hearing you say is you guys were burning like eight, nine million bucks a month with no revenue. Uh, I mean, no, probably less, probably less than that. But I mean, I I don't remember from the top of my head. Back back in the day, you know, I came in sixteen. Um, it took us one one year to close everything. We also didn't take all the money in one sort of transfer. So um, I, I would say four or five months. Yeah, that would give us four or five months. Of runway without any revenue. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, so can I take $40 million divided by four or five months? I mean, that you're basically saying no, you're... Ex- no, no. Yeah. Go ahead. No, no. That, I mean, if you, if you think about that... Um, there are also like you see cash works not the same way as revenue that that comes in right Correct. like um and there are different revenue recognition policies there are expenses that you already paid for there are expenses that you paid over time but yeah i mean um and and as i said we didn't raise 40 million from the very beginning so we we announced it later but um it was actually multiple different uh transactions with more or less the same group of investors. So, okay. So it's not, it's well, not okay. so explain to me how that works. So you don't hear about that often. So, so how much was the first tranche and why did you guys decide to go kind of the step approach? So, so yeah, I mean, technically we just wanted to be super friendly with, with investors because we knew we would not spend money. So, so they had an obligation to fund a certain point, but there was no big difference if money sits on their balance sheet or not, not, not even balance sheet or on our balance sheet or it sits with them. In this case, they can optimize their, you know, IRR, which is one of their main metrics. And we don't really care. So we could negotiate a uh, better valuation because we are nice. Mm-hmm. You see, you see the point, like for investors. Well, so how, how much, how much, how much was, how much yeah. was the first tranche? Yeah. I mean, I, I think we, we, cannot disclose it publicly. But. Okay. But, but like, okay. How many tranches were there total to get up to the total 40 million? Um, so to, to, to the whole thing, probably three or four. And what were they tied to revenue targets or just a time-based approach? No, no, just, just time. Okay. Got it. Okay. Fair enough. So yeah. So you got to so, just clarify. It's, it's, it's not conditional. It's just, it's just, we allowed them to, to send money later because we, we knew we would not need them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's what I was trying to get at. Okay. So 40 million total raised. It was in four tranches. You didn't need all the capital, but you wanted that contractual commitment. And you said, Hey, it's totally cool. If you, you know, send us it in four tranches every six months, not conditional on revenue targets, just time-based. Yep. I see. Okay. Very good. So talk to me about some of these experiments you guys ran that panned out like super quickly and returned a lot of cash. What were some of the first experiments you ran in 2018 when you closed? Uh, we, we started experimenting with, um, new marketing channels. We started doing more YouTube. Uh, we dramatically expanded our global, uh, footprint. So we started hiring people to run marketing for, um, you know, European markets such as Germany, Italy, Spain, France, and so on. So, um, it's, um, you know, those, those were the, the first things that we tried. Mm -hmm. Uh, but then we started investing more in product, uh, product takes more time to kind of show result. And some of things that we started doing in 16, they actually started paying off only 18 or 19. Uh, you know, things like uh, our traffic analytics product. We, we've been building it for two, three years. It's extremely complicated technology. Uh, so it took us quite a while to get everything running. 
Uh, but now it's actually one of the fastest growing product lines mm -hmm. uh, that we ever had. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of in a nutshell what what we started doing once we had more flexibility and could take more risks. And now that some of these product lines have matured, it's that they obviously attract new and different sorts of customers. How many total customers are you serving now today? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't think we disclosed this number ever, <laughs> but uh, we have over 5 million registered users. And then, yeah, I mean, paying customers would be relatively small percentage of total registered users. Okay. But, uh, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's obviously, you know, tens, tens of thousands. Uh, got it. So the reason I'm asking, last time you came on, you said you had about 30,000 paid customers. So how many more than 30,000 do you now have? Materially more. Okay. Like more than double? Uh, probably, probably not, you know, probably not. Okay. Probably not more than double. No. Okay. So fair. I won't push you harder here, but fair to say today, somewhere between 30,000 and 60,000 paying customers and 5 million registered users. Yep. Okay. Where, where, um, how, how do you convert a registered you? Like what's the critical moment that, you know, a, a registered user has to hit to drastically increase the likelihood they convert to paid? Um, it, it really depends. We have multiple different funnels. It depends on what problem users are coming with. Um, so for things like keyword research, uh, we'll give a uh, certain functionality for free, certain amount of data for free. And then as people hit the limit, uh, they will, you know, either upgrade or, uh, you know, sometimes wait another day. We, we limit number of searches that you can make on a, on a free plan per day, or we also limit number of results that we show. For example, for free, we'll show you 10 results. If you want to more than 10, you have to upgrade. So, so that would be sort of funnel for keyword research, but for site audit, it will be different. For site audit, for example, we will uh, allow you to crawl 20 pages for free. So if your website is less than 20 pages, you can use it for free uh, pretty much forever. Uh, but if your website is bigger, then you'll hit the limit and you know either upgrade or you know don't crawl your whole website and, and just limit your site audit to some sections. Um, so yeah, I mean, we have we have more than 15 different different funnels mm -hmm. for 15 different for, products or funnels. Yeah. Funnels. I mean, funnel can include multiple products. How many products do you guys have? Over 40 right now. Over 40. Yeah. Holy crap. So with all these additional products, obviously you're launching them to hopefully cross sell and also bring in new customers. Has the average price that your average customer has paid increased drastically over the past couple of years? Yeah, I think, I think if you, if you look back, you know, to 2008, I think comparing to the first version of the product that we had, uh, our rev average revenue per customer increased uh, more than uh, six times, probably closer to seven times. Yeah. Uh, after I joined, you know, I I, I want to say I want to say almost doubled. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Back, back in May, again, when you came on, you said you, you put a target and said, Hey, you know, the average customer pays somewhere around $180 on average per month. I'm sure there's some way bigger. There's probably some that are smaller, but 180 on average has that 180 increased drastically or no. So, so yeah, it depends on cohorts. So there are two factors here. Um, so people, you know, people, um, uh, come in and then over time they, they upgrade. Another factor factor is that, your low paying customers churn faster than your, um, you know, your best customers who pay more. So I think, you know, every check in general is a, is a combination of, of, of those factors. If you do nothing, if you, if you stop acquiring new customers over time, your average check goes up, but what's the point, right? So I think, it's, you know, you need to think about this on a cohort basis, but yeah, I think, you know, those cohorts that, that were, you know, at, at let's say for example 180 uh they continue to grow it so new cohorts they're they're probably still climbing to this number mm -hmm. well I think, so uh, the reason i'm asking is like one of the things that drives a lot of a hubspot's earning calls is their arpu right average revenue per yep. user and they have like, way more cohorts than you but they don't obviously go into detail on every single cohort the quick way to measure that is just arpu across all cohorts so total customers into total revenue is that about 180 today um 
No, probably not. I, I, by the way, I, I don't know why you have 180. I think I think I, I don't think I told this number. No, you did. You I have the I, I can pull the quote for you. It's no. But do you feel like it's higher or lower than that now? Uh, would would depend would depend on the segment, but I think overall 180 is um, is quite a high number. I mean, if you look at our price page, then we have a uh, plan for hundred dollars plan for $200 and plan for $400. Uh, you can make some assumptions about distribution, but you know it's hard to see average being 180, right? Why is 180 a hard average when your plans go from 100 to 200 to 400? 180 seems like it'd be a, that makes complete logical sense to me that it'd be 180. Yeah. Okay. Then, <laughs> then why not? No, I mean, I mean, you don't usually have everyone on the, on the middle plan, right? And, and no, that would be sorry, quiet. Eugene, come on. You know, you know how these numbers work. You're XVC. ARPU is total customer base divided into your total revenue. Obviously, I know there's different cohorts. That's like obvious SAS 101 stuff. It's important you're measuring that. I'm just trying to get a general ARPU number. The reason I'm asking is because some of the firms like you sometimes will intentionally churn lower paying customers and go way enterprise, four, five, six thousand dollar a month kind of plans. Others will go and go way freemium and decrease their price significantly. I'm just trying to get a general trend. Yeah, listen, th this, I think, you know, if you're looking for trend, this number is absolutely in the range. Yeah. Okay, that doesn't answer my from, question. From, are, are, yeah. are, 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 so the average cut is you have between 30,000 and 60,000 mm -hmm. customers. Do you mm -hmm. feel like the if you take all those customers divided by whatever your revenue is right now, it's about $180 mm -hmm. per yeah. month? Um, it is, it is in a range. Yeah. Okay. And are you from a strategic perspective, do you feel like SEM rush has more growth opportunities serving less customers at a higher price point in the future or more customers at a lower price point? Mm -hmm. So I think, um, the goal of the business is to help as many marketers as possible in general. Like that's, that's always have been the goal. So we, even, even if we at some point say, Hey, it would make a lot of sense uh, to hike prices. Uh, we would not do this because the goal is to have very, very broad presence to have as many marketers as possible. Yes, yeah, so you'd prefer uh, 10 million marketers paying a dollar a month than yeah. 10 enterprise clients paying a million a month. That's that's in a nutshell. Yeah, the the philosophy. Okay. Uh, but but for 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 some of them, uh, you know they need special features and they're willing to pay for those features. Um, so would we, would we build something special for enterprise clients and sell it only to them because only they need this? Yeah. At some point. Sure. Um, not necessarily, uh, our focus right now. Let's talk so more about right now. We are focused. Mm -hmm. Let's talk more about the team. So, so how many folks are on the team today? Um, so we have over 800 people. Okay. And are those all full time? Yeah. And remote? Right now, yes. <laughs> Sorry, pre-virus. <laughs> do, do, are you a remote company? No. Okay, no. got it. So yeah. you have offices. All right, and break that down for me. How many of those folks are engineers? So, yeah. So and so we, we don't call people, you know, just engineers. We, we, we think about this as a product department. And then if your role is engineer, that's... that's How many ready. people are writing code? So, so that's what I'm trying to say. Code is not the only important thing in the product. So in product department overall, we have more than 200 people. Now, out of them, how many write code? Probably 75%. Okay, so call it 170-ish people writing code. How many, do you have quota carrying reps at this price point or is it too cheap to pay a commission? We do. No, we, we have. As I said, some segments of customers pay a lot of money. Mm -hmm. We have customers who pay more than 100,000 per year. Yeah, you don't have any customers paying more than a million per year though, right? Oh, no. But close, not, maybe in the next couple of years? Yet, not yet, not yet. No. <laughs> All right, so how many quota carrying reps do you have? Um, so we have, I think, roughly around 60, 60, I would say. Okay, cool. And what's like the minimum ACV sizes you want them focused on closing? Um. We we don't have minimals. We we had we had previously requirement to close at least annual subscription, uh, 
right now we don't have this. Uh, whatever whatever they sell is good. One of those uh, sales reps, though, if they spend three hours selling someone on a two hundred dollar a month plan, that is not profitable use of their time. Yeah, right. So so their incentive plan is focused on things that are more profitable, um, especially expansion. So so we we find that if if customer sells new revenue, that's good, but new revenue is is subject to higher churn. If sales rep sells to existing customer who is loyal, very unlikely to churn, then you know, one dollar of expansion is going to stay with us forever. And then what we've noticed is that if people expanded, they are more likely to continue expanding. So so that's where we now try to focus our sales teams. So what is expansion. it what on a percentage basis, what is expansion revenue annually today? Um, not, not sure I understand. Like, can, can you, can you? Sure. So, so, so yeah. net, net revenue retention in any mm -hmm. company is made oh, up yeah. from two, is made up from mm -hmm. two components, yeah. gross revenue churn mm -hmm. and expansion. Right. So, so we, we measure kind of one number like net, net revenue retention. And then the question is what, what do you include? What do you don't include? And, and we have roughly, you know, six, seven different ways to calculate it. There are also different definitions of what you call user. Um, you know, for for example, if you have a company like uh, Microsoft and they buy six different subscriptions for their six offices, is it one customer or? No, but you're six you're talking about logo churn on a customer basis. Yeah. This is why people measure revenue churn. It's way simpler. You right. just take mm -hmm. t total revenue from a cohort last year and that same yeah, cohort yeah. this year, how much churned and how much expanded. Exactly what I'm trying to say, like if you, it depends on how you define customer, because if you say Microsoft is one customer, no, Eugene, it doesn't user, matter when you're calculating revenue does. churn. It doesn't matter how many logos are on. You're measuring it purely on a revenue basis. So it doesn't matter that it's yeah. one Microsoft logo. It means that it's a million dollar a year contract. So, so hear me out. There is actual difference. Uh, if you let, let's say someone from Microsoft, Japan, let's say signs up and buy subscription they they have separate billing entity like yeah. they, so if you combine this into one account you say i have expansion for microsoft if you do not combine you say i have new guy in japan who just bought and and his email is microsoft.com but this is new guy because this is new billing entity so it depends on definitions actually yeah but and as i said we, we have like six seven but in general we we are about 100 percent and okay. then we also do segmentation of uh, like, uh, you know, if, if, if customers, um, work in a company with more than 50 employees, then it will be way, way higher than hundred percent. But if they, let's say individual, uh, freelancers with Gmail account and so on, they will have, uh, on average, probably lower than hundred percent. So it, it really depends, but on average, we, we have more than hundred percent yep. revenue retention. Yep. Interesting. Um, okay. And then, so from, from the perspective of the virus, right, obviously everyone wants to be pro just trying to get to profitability as quickly as possible to make sure they can have a long runway here. Are you guys profitable today? Uh, cash flow positive. Okay. Why do you say it so specifically? Is there some other metric you measure where you're not profitable? Sure. sure. Yeah. I mean, as, as many other SaaS companies, if you build people up front, uh, when you sell annual subscriptions, then you get money, but you cannot recognize it as revenue. As a result, your bottom line might be in red, but your cash flow might be positive if you, you if you balance this accurately. So if yeah. you if you take a hundred dollar uh, if you take a payment today for a thousand dollars for the year, which is actually you know eighty three dollars per month for a customer, you're saying you'll take you'll count the mm -hmm. thousand today in this month, and when you do that on a cash flow basis, you're profitable. But if you divide the thousand by twelve months and only recognize it over the next twelve months, you might mm -hmm. be burning a little capital. Yep, that's that's the difference between you know gap and and uh, cash flow. Yeah, so your cash flow, well. your cash flow profitable. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. What will you guys grow at this year? Do you think? What? What will you guys grow at this year? Do you think? Um, I had a number before this this crisis, so which was which was what? <laughs> you know, reasonably reasonably good uh, double digit. High, okay. High double. I would say high double digit for a company of this size. What is that? Seventy eighty percent. No, not that high, but okay. You know. <laughs> okay, so somewhere between twenty percent and sixty percent, right? Right. I, I mean, I mean, 
you see, we, we have 800 people and we are cash, cash flow positive. If we grew 80%, that, That'd be that would be awesome. But yeah. 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 When do you guys, I mean, so look, I don't know what your actual, obviously, ARR is, but I mean, can you break a million, uh, sorry, $100 million in ARR this year, do you think? Or you have to wait till next year? I mean, we, we talked about this. We, we, we did it a long time ago. You broke $100 million in ARR, reckon, recognized sure. ARR. How long ago? What year? Last year. Okay, so that's not a long time ago. You haven't been on in over a year and a half. So, okay, so you broke that last year. That's <laughs> yeah. on a that's on a rec right. that's on a recognized ARR basis, not on a cash basis. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how? So walk. Last question before I mean, we wrap the, up. The, Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, I mean the the difference is not that huge. It's maybe one quarter or so, maybe a little more than one quarter. The last question I want to finish with because I think this is valuable. You had obviously a growth target pre virus. You have to now re-engineer with your you know team what is the new target how have, what have those conversations sounded like how are you planning for for the next six months i think you know reality is that if someone tells you they know exactly what's going to happen and how it's going to impact their revenue they're, they're probably not very honest so well no no i want you but everyone has to take a uh, guess you can't just say i don't know so we're not going to plan i want to know what you, your best your guys best shot your best estimate yeah so so right now we are looking at, at different assumptions and and the the big question is like what what's going to happen with uh, new business and what's going to happen with uh, existing business in terms of churn. So in terms of churn, we see that uh, certain categories of our customers will be impacted materially and certain ca categories will not be impacted pretty much at all. And uh, we look at percentage of customers in those categories. Uh, and uh, apply certain, uh, you know, certain multiples like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, additional 25% of them will churn versus what we would see, uh, you know, naturally, organically. Um, and um, from what we see is that um, in, some, in some categories, we will uh, have, you know, 25% higher churn in some categories, uh, no, no changes at all. And those categories seem to be relatively small for us. So we are talking about, you know, most vulnerable categories like uh, very small agencies, freelancers, and uh, and uh, lo small local businesses. So they, they we, we see them being impacted, but they're historically not the biggest part of our audience by, by any means. We, we usually uh, work more with online businesses. Yeah. Yeah. Very um, good. All right. So, have you, by the way, have you been approached? Yeah. Have you been approached by any bigger, you know, maybe public folks like HubSpot and said, hey, we'd love to buy you guys now. You, we feel like we get you cheaper because everyone's everything's cheap right now. So. So, yeah, I think that brings us to the beginning of the conversation. We we, we can, you know, wait, wait, wait this one out and we don't have to do any irrational moves. Um, there's there is no, there is no need for this. We uh, we're still business that largely owned by founders managed by founders and you know team of uh people who they um assembled over over time uh we don't have to do anything irrational we can wait this one out any unless, plans to raise unless, capital unless, yeah not in this environment probably I, I don't think it's a good idea all right let's wrap up with the famous five number one favorite business book oh uh, intelligent investor number two is there a ceo you're following or studying um, yeah. So right now I'm actually looking at Sadia Nadella. Yep. From, Num from, so from Microsoft. Yep. Number three, what's your favorite online tool besides SEM Russia to build the company? Um, so right now Zoom is everyone's favorite tool, yeah. right? <laughs> Original answer there, Eugene. Good stuff. Number, number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? Uh, so I changed my mind recently. Now I'm sleeping full eight hours mandatory. That's great. And what's your situation? Married, single kids? Still married, but you know, if, if, if coronavirus continues, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> how many kids? I'm joking, I'm joking. Any kids? Yeah, I have one. One kiddo. And how old are you? Uh, me? Yeah. I'm 32. 32. Last question. What do you wish your 20-year-old self knew? Um, you know, I, I would, I would say, you know, 
don't waste your time with stupid things. <laughs> Guys, there you have it. SEM Rush launched in 2008. Now have over 40 products between 30 and 60,000 paying customers, over 5 million registered users, broke over $100 million in revenue last year, hoping to continue to drive solid double digit growth this year, even in the face of the virus. They're profitable on a cash basis. So have plenty of runway. They can afford to write it out. Raised 40 million bucks many years ago, but didn't need the capital. Used it on some experiments. Now over 800 people uh, on the team. Again, obviously all remote right now, looking to continue to scale. UG Thanks for taking us to the top. Thank you. As you guys know, I fight like heck to get these data points for you from these CEOs that rarely do these kinds of shows. If you want more shows like this, make sure you subscribe right now. We're trying to get 10,000 YouTube subscribers by the end of September here, 2019. And it would mean the world to me if you clicked now to subscribe. Additionally, I've got two more great interviews for you. If you want more data points from the world's leading SaaS CEOs, click and watch one of them right now.